How's it going everyone? Welcome to a special bonus interview alongside Jamin Moore. We are accompanied by Hector Perez, the San Jose Earthquakes assistant kit manager. Talk a little bit about his story, ask him some questions of what it's like to work behind the scenes and what it's like contributing to the San Jose Earthquakes off the field. Without further ado, let's get it started. Well, Hector, thank you for joining us. Uh, you thank you for me. accepting the invitation and, and bringing a couple of gifts for us here. You're welcome. <laughs> My pleasure. So talk to us a little bit about uh, your journey. You're an assistant kit manager for the San Jose Earthquakes. Um, tell us about how you first started getting involved in the, in the sport of soccer. Well, it was a little bit awkward, you could say it like that, because <laughs> uh, it wasn't even in my mind, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, the way I started was really funny. Um, when Chivas USA came up, obviously they had like Mexican players from Chivas, Mexico, and I knew a couple already, and obviously some of the staff also. So they invite me over like to practices so I was actually in vacation from school so I was there like every day and the ball used to go over from the fence and I used to go and grab them and throw them back and this was like every day so one time the equipment guy uh, he just came up to me like hey uh, I see you here every day uh, do you want to be part of like uh, the staff like do you want to work and I was like <laughs> oh like I wasn't expecting it so uh, I told him like, you know what, like, let me think about it and then I'll be here tomorrow. <laughs> so I actually went back home. I kind of like talked to my mom and dad and obviously your parents want, want you to go to school. So they were like, no, what's up, what you gonna do with school? And I was like, no, le let me try, you know, like see what, what goes on. So I went back and I told him, you know what, like I'm gonna try it. And he's like, okay, I'm gonna put you, you're gonna be in like in a week of uh, tryouts practically see how you handle everything, you know? So he kind of like taught me like the, the range, you know, like you're gonna do this, you're gonna do. So he went like step by step. And by the second day, third day, he like, you know what, like you're hired. So I was wow. like, okay. How so old were you at the time? I was, I think I was like 19, oh, wow. 19, 18. And you, yeah. you grew up obviously liking the sport. You always yeah, loved the I sport. Yeah, I mean, I was playing sports since I was five. Yeah. I actually, um, when I was, say like 10, we actually moved to Mexico yeah. for like for three, four years. I uh, went to school there like for three years and obviously I was playing soccer and I was getting good looks from scouting and everything. And then my mom told me like, you know what, like we're going back and I didn't want to leave because I, I knew there was people like looking at me. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think I, like, I had a chance to actually go pro and obviously it didn't happen. Came back, played in junior high I was playing high school I played with my high school team um, my senior year we won CIF championship yeah, state championship uh, and then um, went to college two years uh, lost my first year eligibility because of yeah. spots and everything and then I kind of like it went down like playing soccer like a uh, good level and I just started playing uh, semi-pro in uh, California League in, in Los Angeles and um, after that, I was still like working at the same time I was working at Chivas. Yeah. So all my friends were like, oh dude, like, you know, like give me tickets. <laughs> uh, can you uh, take us to meet the players? And I'm like, no, I actually, I can't really like do that, you know? Um, but it was a nice experience. So that's how I started. Like, I don't know where, just took the, the opportunity and started liking it. And obviously I got more experience and uh, I was there from 2005, 2010, and I left to go back to school, yeah. to finish school, and then came back 2013. And I was there, 2013 actually, um, the previous coach that uh, he got fired, he actually called me one time. He like, hey, you know what, like, um, he was with the New York Cosmos. And uh, he like, you know what, we need, I need a people, people like you, you know, like you got good personality, uh, just like your vibe, I need somebody like you for the new players. So he offered me to go to New York. And at that time, I mean, obviously, I was still young and 
I really didn't like. You, you had never been to New yeah, York, right? Yeah, never been to New York. Never left LA, you know. Yeah. So it was a big step for me. So what kind of like took me there was that uh, he actually called my uh, previous my boss, and he came out to the field and he like you know what like he just called me right now, and by that time they already had rumors that she was USA was gonna fold. Mm. So he like you know what like we don't know what's going on with the team right now. We might not be next year. We don't know when. Um, if I were you, I'll take the opportunity and take the job. And what made me take that decision was that he like, if you don't like it, you can always come back. So that kind of like, okay, I have a chance. Try it out. Right. And if I don't like it, I can come back. So actually, I went, took the job, and it was so funny because they called me on a Wednesday. By Friday, I was already flying to New York. So I just like went with it and packed your bags and you left. Yeah, one bag. That's it. One bag. Um, my mom didn't believe me at first. And then when she saw that actually I was leaving, she started like, she got emotional. Cause it was me actually, first time actually being apart from them, from, yeah, my, yeah. from my whole family. So, I mean, it worked well at the end. You know, I won, we won three championships in five years with the Cosmos. And um, I glad I was glad to be part of it. And then I actually am almost here with the uh, San Jose Airquakes. At that time with the Cosmos, you got to work alongside Raul, right? Raul, Marco Senna, uh, Juan Arango, you know, like big names. Yeah. Um, and they were, we were always getting trips from, because we were like sponsored by Fly Emirates. Right. So we had trips to like, Dubai, Spain, England, you know, something for me, like whole different experience. I never, I've never like been to Europe. So that was like. So you got to travel with the got team. to travel with, with the team. And what are know? your responsibilities as a, as a um, kid? As a kid, man, you got, you got to be really, really organized. In the yeah. first place, um, you got to know what you're, you have available for the guys, for the team. And you have to manage, obviously, you have to manage clothing, shoes, everything that a player needs to perform well in the, during practice and during the games. So you started off, you're at Chivas, you knew a couple of the players. Yes. We never did find out. Like, how did you know the players? Was it from your time in, in Mexico? Um, so when, no, so when they used to come to the States. Okay. Um, they always used to like call me to take them like to the mall. Um, I used to rent like a van for them and take like half of them like to the malls. And um, when they came, they got here obviously with the team. They knew I was here, so they contact me again. And they're like, you know what? Like we're gonna actually we're gonna stay over there. We're gonna be playing. So that's how I started in getting involved with with, with them. Not because uh, I, w I was in Mexico and I met them. No, because when they used to come with the team to play actually MLS teams here, or either like they get they were getting invited to play Mexican teams here in the states, and uh, so that's how I, I actually I met them. So you went from Chivas, and then you go to New York with yeah, the Cosmos. Did you decide you were going to come to the Bay Area, and then you applied to the Earthquakes, um, or no. did you talk to the Earthquakes so first and decided to come? So what happened was too same thing. Um, the Cosmos, obviously, I don't know you guys know, but they end up folding too. Yeah, right. You know, the, like the NSL started having problems and all that. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I went back, came back home to LA. I was actually working in a bank. Oh wow! And um, I already knew Andy, the head equipment man manager, and um, he called me like, "Hey, what's going on?" You know, and, like it's always the news, and like, "Yeah, dude, like, I think the." Cosmos gonna fold. So you were done. Yeah, I was point. practically done. You're done with soccer. Yeah, I mean, I, obviously, I got offers to go to like Philly, like the yeah. um, our uh, president at that time, uh, Eric Stober, that's his name. Mm -hmm. um, he contacted me like, hey, they need an assistant with the Philadelphia Union, but I was already done with the East Coast. I yeah. was like, you know, um, it's not I just want to go back yeah. home. Yeah. So I ended up coming home, and then probably two months, Andy called me. He like, hey. Um, I'll keep an eye, you know, see if any team needs an assistant or is looking for someone, like, I'll, I'll put in a word for you. And we just kept in contact. Uh, actually, I, I met Andy when he was with the Carolina Railhawks. Okay. So that's where we, I met him because I was with the Cosmos, he was with the Railhawks. Another NASL. Another NASL, yeah. yeah. So we just kept in contact and his assistant left. And he like called me right away. He like, hey, uh, I'm looking for an assistant, and I'd like you to come and uh, take that position. So I didn't doubt it, and he asked me like, hey, can you be here on the first of August? 
So I was here first in August on 2017. I was, that's when I started. So you, you've been in San Jose and you've been a part of this team uh, one way or another for, for the last couple of seasons and you've seen their highs and you've also seen their lows. Yeah. Obviously right now you're experiencing a, a high with, with them. Um, you as, uh, you know, as, as someone who is frequently talking with the player, frequently in the locker room, maybe talking with the coaches themselves, uh, what can you say about the current San Jose Earthquakes? What can you say about the culture under Matias Almeida? Um, the culture with Matias is more, uh, how you say, um, he likes everybody to be united, you know? He, he doesn't care if you're from Africa, from Mexico. He doesn't care. What he wants is, as the way we're going to communicate, it's being together and forming a, a family. That's practically what what he's uh, bringing to us, you know, like um, being a big family. And like he says, if we win, everybody wins. If we lose, everybody loses. But everybody has to be united, no matter what happens. And he's he's actually brought that, you know, when, when I was telling, coming in, when he talks to the whole group, just by his energy, you know, he transmits that to everybody. And I think it's a, it's a good thing that He's, he's here right now with the with the team. A lot of coaches say words like that. You hear coaches say all the time, you know, we're, we're a family here, or they, they they talk about how important it is to, to be united. Even in the Quakes locker room, another coach had put up on the wall, forward as one. Is it the other coaches were talking it, but the players didn't believe it? What's yeah, I think, I think it's that the way he talks to the players makes them believe in him. You know, even me, uh, as part of the, like, Behind the scenes, I always listen and I, I get chills when he talks, you know. And I think the players, if I get them, I think they, they get them too. So they get all the pos positive energy from him and sh actually sh go out in the field and, and perform what he wants to. So that's that's my way of seeing it. Having been a part of the Chivas organization, when you heard that Matias Almeida was going to be coming to San Jose, what was your reaction? At first, I didn't believe it, you know, but <laughs> when I saw him, when he came first, the first time he came in and, I mean, obviously he shook hands with everybody, I was like, wow, he's really here, you know? And me following Chivas personally and just the success he, he had there, I knew, I mean, obviously, I knew he's a, a good coach. And I was like, he said too, like, it's a new system. Um, it's going to take time and it actually... You guys seen it, it did because the first four games, you know, we were not that good, and now everybody's talking about us. But even even that, um, he always tells the players like, keep your your feet on the ground, you know, because we we haven't won anything yet. So I know t just the way he talks, you you know, he has experience in the way to handle to handle the team. Hector, uh, you obviously speak Spanish. You're a fluent Spanish speaker, as you are English. Um, do you happen to be a translator at times, too? Uh, it was mostly last year. Last where, year? Yeah, with Michael's. Um, there was nobody else. So um, it's funny because like, sometimes I was at the, the other end chasing balls, and he, he needed me to translate, so he screamed at me, and I used to like full speed <laughs> just to translate like for one, two guys. Yeah. Um, this time, um, not that much, to be honest. Just sometimes I try to help um, the other coaches when uh, Agustin is not around because he has a translator, yeah. and he's really good at it. And um, when he's not around, obviously they, they look for me, and I tend to translate. But uh, I'm not that really that good, <laughs> to be honest. Do you, do you have a, a one funny story that you can tell us about your experience uh, in, in San Jose? Maybe something in particular that kind of stuck with you um, in the last two, three years that you've been working for the for the team. I would say not really funny, but um, just like uh, the way the the players like treat me sometimes. <laughs> um, they fool around a lot with me. Yeah, you know, like they'll be like busting jokes or try to do uh, something like <laughs> that gets me irritated. But um, everybody tells me like I always have a good personality, and every day they tell me like we always hear and, like you're always smiling, you know. Um, but it's mostly like like that. Like guys always try to joke around with me. Um, 
they actually right now actually right now I stopped playing ping pong because everybody uses me to <laughs> <laughs> how you say like get better yeah yeah you know I, like first they can't beat me and then they start beating me and yeah. then the other guy oh I want to play Hector like a practice dummy. yeah so I told him <laughs> you know what I'm gonna retire for ping pong like for a month <laughs> and they keep insisting like hey let's play let's play I'm like no 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 I'm done so I think that's one of the things that uh, the guys always try to be ar around me like just play jokes with me. In just a year, we've seen the locker room really go from almost a very European type focus into one that is much more of a Latino type focus, right? And obviously, that probably has to come out in the personality of the locker room. Like, just, just you know, not in the wins and the losses, but just in terms of the personality. How have things changed, you know, in a um, year? A lot, to be honest. Like, everybody's, uh, their mood is way better. You know, um, they get they get to the in the morning. They get to the locker room and they already like have energy. Like oh, I want to practice now. You know, last year um, I would say it was opposite. You know, I think last year uh, th most of the guys already wanted like the season to end. You know, and this year it's different. They actually want want to go out there, practice the hard the hardest, and they can't wait for the game days ac actually. So it, it really like changed a lot. And has to do too. Um, most of the guys are pulling effort um, to learn uh, Spanish. Yeah. They're uh, using the Olingo a lot, you know. So just by that, you could tell they they actually want to, you know, um, be better just by uh, trying to trying hard to learn Spanish just to communicate with the uh, with Matias. And he what we see also uh, uh, on social media is that um, there's a lot more. Uh, Spanish music, yeah, you know, yeah, within yeah. the within the locker room. Yeah, well, they tend to switch it. Like they'll be like, okay, put five five uh, Spanish songs and then go to English, <laughs> and then they, they try to mix it up. They don't want to be like, oh, it has to be English, you know? Yeah, or it has to be Spanish. They they try they they try to mix it up. In inclusive. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Have you noticed players changing their music preferences as re as a result of this? Uh, yeah, uh, Tommy. He sometimes. I don't know where he puts like Spanish music, and we're like, "Oh, whose music?" And then you're like, "Oh, it's Tommy's." <laughs> we're like, "Oh," <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like I said, like just the mood in the locker room is totally different, you yeah. know. Um, I think all the guys are actually getting along really, really well, and um, they communicate a lot. You know, like they're always like laughing. Yeah. But uh, when it comes to uh, focusing on practice, that's because that's one of the main things. Uh, the Matias wants from them, they, they do that. Well, Hector, we're coming to a close, but we really appreciate you accepting the invitation, telling us a little bit more about your story, giving us some insight on what really is happening, uh, you know, behind those, those locker room doors and on the field. Uh, we obviously can't end this, though, without getting a little prediction from you. Uh, we would like to know what, how you think the San Jose Earthquakes will end this 2019 I think season. top three. Top three in the West? Yes, and we'll be raising the trophy for sure. Okay. Bold prediction. Bold. <laughs> before we go, though, Joel, before we go. Oh, that's we, right. We've got some things that we, I think we need to show because sure. this. Or at least that one. Yes. And, well, we have, a new, we have a new piece for the set in yep. behind. One signed of the parlay by all jerseys. The players. Signed by the team. Uh, that's great. And he brought this us this. This, gift this one. Here. This thing's amazing. Please tell us the story on this. Well, this one I actually got it from Andy. Um, he has one in the in our uh, equipment room, yeah. And I think it was super cool. Right. And uh, I was like, one time I was like bored, and I was like, oh, man, what should I do? And I know he has patches from all the teams that played in the All Star game when I was here in San Jose. So I just got them all and started putting them in. That's what I came up with. This is pretty pretty unique. No, is this yeah. is one, one, one of of course two. you know one of, one of two. asked to be on top right now, so. <laughs> <laughs> and you also have the old Clash, the yeah, 20th clash. anniversary. Yep. Well, this is great. Well, this is a great gift. We're obviously going to so hang it up high here. Absolutely. And it's going to be a part of the set alongside with the parlay jersey there that was also a gift from Hector. And some new has hats. Some new hats. Yep. Has uh, the signatures of all the players, including some of the coaches, like Benjamin Galindo and Matias Almeida himself. So without further ado, I mean, thank you so much again for, thank for you joining guys for us. having me here. And uh, hopefully we can do this sometime soon. Thanks for watching. Please go ahead and leave a like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Ask us, uh, let us know who you want us to interview next.
Until next time, Black and S will 